to obtain a master's degree from Boston University in secondary science education. She's been teaching high school science for four years um, while also choreographing for various marching bands throughout the state. She currently resides in East Grand Rapids <laughs> and is enjoying some time off from work with her new son. So Erin is here today to tell us how to live green and save green with various tips and tricks and recipes. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, and hopefully you are too. So, Aaron. Hi guys. All right, so at first I just kind of thought I would tell you like my credentials. I'm certainly by no means like certified, you know, of course I, I, I'm just kind of like a personal interest that I've taken on the last year since I've been home with my son. So these are just kind of things that I've come up with just being at home for the year. So um, that's my son Levi right there. I just thought it would be like a fun time just to brag a little bit and show you this picture. Um, we have a little schnoodle named Mitch. And this, I got married a couple years ago, so I got married like out in the woods at our cabin. So I'm like a wannabe hippie, really bad. So these are kind of like all my wannabe crunchy things that I do at my house. Um, so I thought I'd kind of go like room by room. I was trying to do this as I was at home, and I actually started just like taking things off of my countertop. Because sometimes I don't realize all the things I do, but I think it, it adds up to it, you know, once you put all the little things together. Um, you know, some of the things, we have a dishwasher at our house, it's actually broken right now, so we've been using the sink for everything, but believe it or not, it saves a lot of water to use the dishwasher. Sometimes I don't do it just because I'm like, oh, what a waste, just turn it on, but it actually uses a lot less water than just like running the sink. So I don't know where you guys live, you know, what city you're in, but we're in Eastern Grand Rapids, we pay for water, so it, you know, just to not run the sink, it actually saves us some money. Um, and again, it seems very little at times, but just from the last year that I've been home, we do look back at our water bills, and we've saved quite a bit of money on our bill. You know, quite a bit is a couple bucks on our bill at least is in the end quite a bit. Um, always use your air dry setting. I always, when I'm at home, I make sure it's on that because you don't want to use the heat. You're just wasting electricity that you don't really need. Um, so those are kind of good things. I like to sew. I don't does anybody in here sew at all or like a little bit. You, and it's okay if you don't. You can like, there's, has a, there's a stitch witchery stuff I'll show you. It works really good. But like I sewed my own cloth napkins. I don't know if anybody, when you go to a nice fancy restaurant and you like lay them in your lap, it feels so nice. And now, like, I'll just make, like, tacos, and it just feels so fancy because we have cloth napkins. It's something that was really easy. Um, I bought fabric on clearance. I sewed it myself. Really easy thing. And then when people come over, you know, you can feel really fancy pants. Then I found these in my house. I bought these, I think, when I got out of college. Just, like, you know, you, like, roll it up and put it in, like, a napkin ring and put it just, like, no one actually uses it. You just set it on your table so it looks really nice. Well, then I'm like, I've had these this whole time just for looks. So, like, use these, and it's... I don't, it's just better than, you know, wasting a paper towel every time. Um, all these cups people use nowadays, like these cute little reusable cups. I bring them in. I'm a pop addict. It's horrible, but I am. I go into the gas station, like, with one of my cups because it's just, like, why not? Like, let me fill it up in my cup. It probably saves them a little bit of pop. It probably doesn't fill as much. But, you know, it's just, I think it's just kind of, like, feels like you're doing something for the earth. Right? You're kind of, you know, not wasting as much stuff. Um... Let's see, I had a couple more things in the kitchen. I lost my little clicker, so I brought this uh, little number pad that I had. I kind of that. I was like, at least that way I can... All my school stuff was packed for the year. So this is a tip. I don't know. Does anybody like bananas in here? They're like one of my favorite fruit. Okay, Nicholas really likes bananas. All right, see? Um, banana trees, I am convinced, are made by whoever sells Chiquita. I don't know. Whoever is the main producer of bananas creates banana trees because if you ever notice, when you hang your bananas on the banana tree, they get bad really quickly. And if anyone took a science class or biology, you learn that ripening fruit actually releases called ethylene gas. Um, and as soon as one banana starts to ripen, it causes all the other ones to ripen, and your bananas go fast, way faster if they're on the banana tree. Get, um, go right quicker. So if you really want to be green or save your food that you buy, you should put your bananas all around the kitchen in different locations. <laughs> so my husband will often be like, why is there a banana on top of the refrigerator? Because I don't want it to go bad fast. So spread your bananas out across your kitchen. Um, the other thing I do is I use reusable containers all the time. My son, Levi, all he eats is cottage cheese. He loves it. So I like save all of them. I wash these. You can recycle them. They have the little like number five down here. So always good to wash and recycle. But if not, like don't go buy rubber made containers. Just use these. Like maybe you felt kind of stupid going into work with this, but I kind of got over it very quickly. I was like, I don't care what you think. Like, I'm bringing in this big container, and it just you know, it's, you're not wasting plastic bags or whatever. So my husband actually went to work 
last week Thursday and he came home he was like, I was so excited for the, all this hummus that you packed for me at lunchtime and then I opened it up and I found out it was like fruit or something. I don't know. So it's like a surprise lunch this way too. It's fun. Uh, green bags, I, does anybody have these at home? I think they actually sell them at the dollar store because they didn't go very big. Like no one really got into them. Totally work. I had some kids do a science fair project on them two years ago and they do, they, they actually what they do is that gas that I talked about, they let the gas escape and then they keep the, the um, the fruit kind of away from it, so it actually does keep your vegetables and fruit um, good a lot longer. So just a little thing that I thought was kind of neat. Let's see how she did that. Um, another thing I started to do this year, I feel like I don't know, I feel like an old woman, like hoarding things away in my house. But you could freeze a lot of things that people didn't know you could freeze. Um, butter, I don't know why you want to freeze butter. Maybe it goes on sale and it's really cheap. <laughs> Buy a bunch of it. Why not? Um, black tree, black cheese. We go through shredded cheese a lot, so it's sometimes like buy one for free. Buy them all, like buy 10 of them and then freeze them when they don't go bad. They end up like defrosting really well. Um, bananas, again, if, if maybe you kept them on your banana tree or something and they went bad, you can peel your bananas and then slice them and then you can freeze them. Um, and then you can also make ice cream out of it. I've never had, have you had banana ice cream? Mm -hmm. A lot of people swear by it and say it's really good. So that's like on my to-do list of things. Um, eggs, if they go bad, which sometimes my husband's always like, buy me a bunch of eggs, I want to make omelets, and he never makes omelets, but if you break them, and you can either add salt or sugar just to kind of keep the yolks from getting lumpy, you can actually like whip them up and freeze them. And you freeze them. Um, milk you can freeze. They say it kind of gets like, I, well I've frozen, I haven't frozen cow's milk, I was nursing my son, so I did freeze some milk, but it wasn't, but it does change colors in the freezer, but once you defrost it, it's fine. Deli meat, uh, I do this sometimes because we try and do like a once a month shopping trip. So I get all the deli meat for the month and I just freeze like a pound of it or something like that. But all this stuff goes on sale too. I feel like the meat and the shredded cheese like just goes on sale. So just buy a bunch of it and freeze it. Kind of saves money. Um, I tried to, this was actually one experiment of mine that didn't work out so well. So I didn't bring you any of it. I brought you some stuff that does work pretty well. This was I tried to make my own um, liquid dish detergent. This, this particular recipe didn't work out, but there's a bunch online if you're ever interested in it. Um, you can buy this soap. So it's kind of like this all-purpose soap. You can find it at Meijer. It's you don't have to go anywhere special to get it. Um, baking soda, Arm and Hammer washing soda. I don't know if you've seen that. It's kind of in the same aisle of like laundry detergent and things like that. And it's a they kind of just call it like this all detergent. It's a booster, household cleaner, and it's really neat. I just saw this on here the other day. You can send in for a free booklet, which I did because <laughs> it has a bunch of like tips for around the house. So this is pretty much you can use this in laundry detergent things to clean your sink with, you can use it in this type of soap, just a bunch of different soap recipes. So that stuff's really helpful for that. Um, I This one did work out, I didn't bring any of it with me today, but this one is in my own dishwashing soap. Um, this has no reason, this is this doesn't have anything to do with why my dishwasher is broken, but I use this in my dishwasher and it does work really good. Um, the Borax, the Borax again, this is just kind of like an all-in-one, all, all all-purpose cleaner. Um, this is actually naturally occurring. I have a picture of like a big borax crystal that they've got. It's like a mineral that they got, um, they had dug up. So some kosher salt, again, the super washing soda. And this like lemmy shine stuff, it actually is really good. You can add it to any of your soap in your dishwasher and it works really well. Um, this thing I did, I've done a few of these in my house. I grow my own herbs, which is really nice. Then you can like go and you just feel really cool when you're cooking and you can go pull your own fresh herbs and things like that. Um, green onions, I don't know if anyone buys them from the store. We use them a lot. There is some like, I don't know, arguments back and forth. Some people use like the top of them, which I thought was called chives. Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Right, like the top part is called chives. And then this part is like the green onion. But if you use the top of it, the green part, once you're done, you can save these in water and they'll just keep regrowing. So you don't ever, you should never have to go to the store to like buy more of those because you can just grow them right in your kitchen. Um, same thing with the thing of garlic from the store, especially if you just kind of use this top of it or a part of it that kind of breaks off when you have fresh garlic, you just put the rest in a little pot in your kitchen and so you shouldn't ever have to buy this ever again. <laughs> um, let's see what else for the kitchen. And if you have any questions or anything, just shout out. It's fine by me. Uh, a couple things in the bathroom. I started doing this. Um, I guess I just don't like buying like I don't like buying soap again because it's expensive. And then you're using this like plastic container that you already bought. Uh, I read this little tip online. I took some of my son's Johnson and Johnson baby shampoo, you fill it up like an inch, and then the, the rest you fill up with water, and you go like one, two, and then you have your own foaming hand soap. And I like foaming hand soap, I just feel like it comes out nicer, and then you feel like your hands are a lot cleaner, and it foams perfect, and then you never have to buy foaming soap ever again. I think it probably, I think I did the math one time of like how many things I filled up, this costs like less than 10 cents. So you get 
sold forever. So that was really neat. But that's only if you had the foaming bottle, right? Yeah, so okay. you have to buy one, I guess, right? And then, <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't have the foaming bottle, I mean, at least buy one of the big, like, refills at Walmart or whatever for the dial. So, but yeah, so you do need one foaming bottle to get the foaming hand soap. Um, I make my own toothpaste at my house, and I have some over here if you guys are interested in it. I really like doing it. Um, I will admit, like, the, if you try, if you take it home and try, I won't, I'm not going to say that you're in love with the first time because it is, like, kind of salty because it has baking soda in it. Um, but if you look at the back of your toothpaste container, <laughs> this is just for, like one plug for a toothpaste, is kind of gross. They have all these horrible ingredients, you're not supposed to eat it. Like, well, then why am I putting it in my mouth if I ingest it and get sick? Like, it's just weird. Um, a lot of these ingredients in one, like, some are in dynamite, and of course, you know, it's not the exact form, but it seems kind of strange. And a lot of the ingredients are actually just to do like the foaming in your mouth, because we all think that that makes it feel really clean when really like that. We all know that it's the bacteria in your teeth, it's about getting the bacteria off. So, this one is all natural. You know, you could eat it and not get sick. Um, this is called xylitol, and you can buy it at the health food store. I go to Harvest Health Foods. It's just like a natural sugar substitute, it's from birch. So all natural, it's sweet just like sugar. You can use it in baking and stuff like that too. I haven't done that yet, but it's this. Um, I buy baking soda. I don't buy like a big box to store. This one's like aluminum free, so especially if you're gonna be adjusting it, it's probably the best to do. Um, then you do a little bit of coconut oil and some, I do peppermint extract. And, but I'll be honest, you could add a lot of peppermint, you don't really taste the peppermint. It tastes a little bit like salt. Um, <laughs> but if you melt this up and just literally, I kind of mix like one part baking soda to one part xylitol, um, a little bit of peppermint extract, and then maybe like four tablespoons of this coconut oil. And it just, the first time you brush your teeth afterwards, it feels so nice. Because it feels like when you go to the dentist every six months and they like grind, you know, they use that like chalky, like it's like that. It's really nice every time you brush your teeth. So I have some over there if you want to take some home with you. And I like it again just because it, it's all natural and I don't feel like I'm putting weird things in my mouth that, you know, shouldn't, like these ingredients from other, from dynamite and things like that. It just seems strange to me. Um, I haven't tried Polita tabs in my toilet, but um, it's on my grocery list for next month. Apparently, you put, put one in your toilet, shut the tank, leave it overnight, fresh toilet the next day. So, sounds pretty interesting. I do make a daily shower cleaner. <laughs> oh, so that people come to my house and they make fun of me because I have all these little like hand, like things I've made around my house. But this is all it is is vinegar, and I add a little bit of shampoo and water. Um, I think I did like one part vinegar, two parts water, kind of shook it up, and then you just like spray it on your shower when you're done because the acidity and the vinegar cuts down on all the soap scum in your bathroom. So I like that. This also, the vinegar also works really good for um, cleaning out anything in your sink, like any scum off your sink, any of your drains you can clean with vinegar. Vinegar and baking soda, um, baking soda and hydrogen peroxide, all that stuff really helps with your kitchen stuff. So I usually don't buy, um, I got really into magic erasers for a long time those are awesome but uh, baking soda and peroxide pretty much works the same and you can also use that same um, to, to brush your teeth with for whitening as well my dentist told me that so peroxide and baking soda um hmm, let's see so yeah anyways that's my toothpaste you mix it all up and it kind of you get that like toothpaste consistency I put it in a cute little jar because it makes me feel good um, I went to TCBY, I got a little spoon so you can put it on your toothbrush, but I'll be honest, I think now we just like dip it into it. Um, the days when it was really hot, like two weeks ago, it was like toothpaste consistency. You could like squeeze it, but on most days in our house when it's like 68, 70 degrees, it, it actually is like a little thicker. It doesn't really squeeze out, but I think you'll like it. So if you want to take one home, take one. <laughs> My sister, Kristen, she doesn't, she doesn't really like it that much. Um, the other thing I brought is some laundry soap for you. This is one I definitely make on my own. I made it today. I made like 40 or so samples of it, and it cost me like, I don't know, $3 or something like that. And I, I made this all the time. We don't buy regular soap anymore. A um, couple of things in your laundry room. First of all, I just try and wash less frequently. Like my husband will throw clothes in. I'm like, is that really dirty? You can wear those jeans again, right? Um, our dryer has a cool down setting. Turn it off because that way it's, it's done when it's hot and you can like get the wrinkles out. And the, you know you don't have to iron them so they're all nice and um, unwrinkled. And also you're saving electricity. Um, borax again, the stuff I told you about like in the kitchen. I fill a little bit uh, gallon sized jug up with like or gallon sized bucket up with some warm water and I soak stains in it and it gets stains out really well. So you don't have to buy any stain remover or anything like that. I try and use like larger loads. I do a short wash cycle because really most of the things we wear on normal days aren't dirty enough to be washing them. So I try and at least save a little bit of electricity and energy there. 
Um, for fabric softener alternatives, I use like the little bars that you can stick in your dryer, but I've also heard that you can soak them um, like in liquid fabric softener, like soak a towel and just pop it in there for like you know, 40 times or so, and then you can just like soak in that towel again. So you're using a lot less fabric softener and money that way. Um, odds and ends around my house really quickly. I am pretty excited. I just made my own Swiffer cover Aww. because I am kind of obsessed with sweeping my house and my house is really dusty. You can get these little, this was two, two of these little orange things. This is how gross I am. I didn't wash this before I brought it. It really works. Um, it was, so this technically cost me a dollar because I had to use two of these orange sheets. But you can go to Target or the dollar store. That's where I get these little terry cloth guys. Um, and if you don't sew, that's okay, because all you would have to do is, you know, you could like pull one up and even like put two holes in and do a string and like shoelace it on or something like that. So there's definitely ways to do it without a sewing machine. I got, yeah, seriously, I got fancy and sewed it, but I don't think I would next time, because, and then you just pop it off and wash it. So this cost me a dollar. Um, but I was adding up the numbers, like $7 for a package of 12, but then like, so, say you do it like once every month or something, that's quite a chunk of change for the year. So I'm pretty proud of my little one. This one I um, I just kind of made like a little pocket on the inside and then I cut them so it's a little like duster around my house. Again, so cheap. Like these little tiny things you don't really think about that can save you quite a bit of money over the, um, over the course of a year. Another thing I'm big on about my sister, she just lived with me for a couple months. She like throws out all of her clothes. Like when the sweater doesn't have a button, she throws it out. So I, you know, if there's anything you could do is like get a spool of thread and a needle and just learn how to like fix some things. I won't lie, today, Honestly, I was like sewing up a patch on these pants, and I have another one sewed up over here. I don't know why I should throw them out for my favorite pair of pants. So when you're missing a button or something, I just don't get why people don't like sew a new button back on, or you know, sew a little patch onto it or something. That's that saved us a lot of money. Um, my husband makes funny because I, I actually sewed a whole lot of his socks, but he really liked them. And man socks are expensive, right? Like you go, I don't know how much they are, but they're like ten bucks for a pair or something. And I was like, you're not just gonna go buy a new pair of socks. I'll sew the whole. So. I think that's a pretty good green activity you could be doing in the house. Oh, um, rechargeable batteries. I'm not sure. Sometimes these, I feel like these were really big for a long time. You can go with these little things at the store. We don't buy normal batteries anymore, so I think that's a really nice thing, especially because most people throw them out. Because you have to find a place to to recycle them if you wanted to recycle them. So you know, just buy reusable batteries around your house. That saves a lot of um, a lot of waste. Um, we don't really use a lot of um, AC in our house either. It's about $100 to $200 a month on average. So, you know, if you if you like it a lot colder, you're, you're wasting quite a bit of money trying to use that. So, you know, either shut your shades during the hot part of the day. Some people say that if you do do that, um, if you just shut the windows and all the shades, you can actually keep your house at a pretty, like, consistent temperature for the day. Um, in the wintertime, you can open up those shades, let the sun in. So there's a whole, like, thing online I've been reading about just... Um, about this kind of like passive solar heating where you just can kind of let the sun like warm your house and things like that. And it keeps it pretty stable if you have good windows and nice curtains and things like that on it. Turn the heat down over the winter time, I wrote a little note above the heater. I was like, put a sweater on. So I would just go and put a sweater on. You know, I don't like to be freezing cold, but I can just put a sweater on at least. Like I don't have to wear a tank top and shorts when I go to, you know, when I go to bed, like you can have a pair of sweatpants on or something. So that's one thing I have to do. Refilling ink cartridges, that's one I always forget about and that because then I go to buy them and they're so expensive. They're like 20 bucks for a new ink cartridge. I don't know, if, has anybody gone to Walgreens and gotten a refill? Like, I feel like no one has either. And I don't know why people don't do this. You save a lot of money. It only costs like 10 bucks. If you go to Costco to Walgreens and they refill it for you. So, um, One thing I just learned to get rid of pests in your house. Again, I'm trying to be green. My son, like I just don't really want a lot of things like laying around or whatever. Grits kills ants and other bugs as well. Um, the ants is kind of a sad story, actually. The ants eat the grits, and it expands in their stomach. <laughs> and I, this is tried and tested. I found an ant in my house one day, and so I captured it under that glass, and I fed it some grits. <laughs> and within about three hours, it died. And my husband came home, and he was like, are you sure it didn't just run out of air in there? And I was like, I don't know. It's a pretty small ant, and it's a pretty big jar. But just to be sure, I captured another ant the next day, and I put it under the jar, and he lasted for, like, the whole day until he was... He was faking me out because he would just be like laying there and I would open it up and he would like move really quickly and then I killed him because I, I shut him. I shut the little jar on him. But he lasted all day long and the other ant only lasted like three hours. So you just put some grits around your house and all the ants kind of get attracted to it. They eat it and then they die. So I thought that was pretty interesting because that was a new one that we hadn't done. Um, I think I was telling you guys about the Stitch Witchery. If you don't sew, 
This stuff you can buy at Meijer, you can buy at a, um, like a Hobby Lobby. You just put it on, like if you want to do a hem or something like that, you just lay it on there, you then like fold the fabric over and you iron it and it just like glues the fabric together. It's like a, the best thing for people who don't really want to sew. So you could use this to make your own cloth napkins because then you could like lay the stitch witchery, fold it over, iron it, and then it looks like you fancy sewed these napkins for yourself. Um, you could like have a pair of pants or if you want to make something into shorts or something like that. So it works really good for um, for most fabrics. So there's kind of a cheat if you don't want to sew. Or if you don't want to, like maybe your mom sews or a friend of yours. These type of things take such little time, like that little cover. Someone would probably like be willing to do it for you if you asked. I might even be willing to do it for you. It doesn't take that long. Um, I just started using green weed killer, aka vinegar, at my house. Um, I have so much of this laying around, it's really cheap. This costs like 50 cents to a dollar. Spray it on a plant. You can put some dis dish soap in there. I think just plain old vinegar works just fine too. So um, I actually meant to put the after picture up there. Um, it, I, put, I sprayed it twice, like two different days, and it's gone. So instead of just like, plug, like pulling the weeds and having them grow back, it'll never grow back because I killed the roots. So vinegar works really good for that. Um, my husband just bought a new lawnmower. I don't know if a lot of guys know this, but he go, he's always excited to buy his lawn tools. You can buy like corded ones that are much cheaper. So I asked him how it was, and he said, he said it's like a vacuum cleaner, really. He's like, it's not that bad. You just have to keep the cord out of the way. And you save a lot of money just buying like an electric um, tool versus a gas powered one. And then you don't have to buy the gas. Uh, he also has an electric like weed whacker and things like that too. We had a push mower for a while, which are awesome if you have a really small yard. And ours is small, but I think just like the makeup of our yard is mostly weeds, not grass. And it wouldn't like chop through the weeds. So, I, you know, just think about some of those options like when you're going to the store, that can save you quite a bit of money. You know, solar feeding in your... Uh, in your yard, you can get solar covers for your pool. We had a solar heater when I was in high school that like the water went through these little black veins and the sun would hit it and kind of warm it up. So it did use some electricity, but it wasn't using what like a full powered heater would be for a pool. Um, kind of one of the last things, just like garbage, it can be pretty expensive. I know in Grand Rapids it is, you have to pay like per bag or you have to buy the big, um, the big tub to put your garbage in. To get rid of yard waste in Grand Rapids, you have to buy a a thing that's like 30 bucks and then you have to pay five dollars every single time you waste it but you could really be taking everything that you're throwing out or, or giving away to the yard um, yard waste collectors you could just be composting in your backyard like in a little pile so we just started one at our house um, you just put like eggshells vegetables fruit peels things like that in there all your yard waste your weeds and those can compost over time you kind of can mix it mix it up aerate it a little bit and use that for your gardening again or you know just keep it back and I'm sure other people Garden. If you don't use it, they would probably want to use it because it works really well for that. Um, and then you're saving quite a bit of money. Think about like over a year or two of saving that. You're, you know, 200 bucks, 300 bucks probably if you were just going to be throwing that out. Um, recycle. Again, the more things you recycle because that's a free service, you're kind of saving on your trash service as well. Because you're throwing less trash away. So that's kind of one thing in our house. We always try to make our recycling bigger than our, than our trash container. Um, I always like to like just be reminded of what I can recycle in my house because sometimes I forget. I a lot of times throw a lot of plastic into the recycling that can't be recycled. So make sure that it has like the little numbers on it, um, telephone books, any of your grocery bags can usually be recycled. They have like a little number two or number four on the bottom of it. Um, any of your tin cans or aluminum, you just have to like take um, on a glass container, take like the, the lid off that can. Um, I did find that Ziploc bags are one thing that I used to always bother me that I couldn't recycle. But if you ever have been to D&W or like Meijer, they have a little section where you can recycle some of their grocery bags. You can recycle Ziploc bags in those too. So you can't throw them in your normal recycling, but if you have time, you can just kind of collect those. So I have like little separators or like things I can put in different recycle containers. Um, so those like dry cleaning bags, bread bags that don't have numbers, those can all go somewhere. So again, you're not putting it in your trash, you're kind of saving money that way. Um, uh, yeah, bread bags, any of those like wrappings around your paper towels, those can be recycled. Um, all those stupid, we have like those soggy newspapers laying around our street, like those yellow bags that your newspaper comes in, those can be recycled. So I just try and remind myself that, I know it's like dirty and soggy, but like pick it up and empty it out and just you can recycle those few things. Um, another thing, I didn't know how many people maybe are like looking for a place to live or picking an apartment complex. The one thing I love about where we live is that we're close to everything. So today I walked to the bank with my son in a wagon. And just like being able to walk places, we have a playground near us, so we're not going to spend $600 on a swing set right now because we can walk to a playground. My brother lives up in Cedar Springs. He's going to be buying a playground set in the next week or two. And he told me today they're offering, like, on Craigslist, like, $550 for it. That's a lot of money.
money for my husband and I, especially me being at home. So just thinking about like a place to live where we can walk places instead of having to buy it ourselves um, has probably saved us just a ton of money in general thinking about all the, the things we can use instead of um, buying ourselves. So I like to ride my bike places. That makes me feel like a good green person too. Um, kind of more for fun, but I just think a lot of things around my house I've been trying to do myself. Uh, I've made like out of some old barn wood that we had, some old twine, we made like this little picture holder at our house and then we can like inter you know, change the pictures out of it all now and then, so that's kind of fun. Um, I took a picture of my son and all these different little pieces of him, I mod podged over him on a piece of foam board, so this whole project cost me I think four dollars or something like that. Um, I made myself a little soap holder out of like a, a dollar stick candle store thing, a candlestick from the dollar store, a little plastic plate. And I put like myself up there or whatever. <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. I made my son a quilt out of like all my old t-shirts that I just couldn't like bear to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, I made this little plant holder in my house out of some mason jars and some old barn wood that we had. I tried growing herbs in it. It didn't work very good because they didn't get any sun. But I then have just put some like house plants from my ear in it. And it's just like, it's kind of nice. It's green. Um, and again, most of it is kind of just like upcycle things. That's kind of a fun word everyone's using, upcycling. Just taking some old things laying around my house and and trying to use it in ways so I'm not just going out and buying things to decorate my house with. Some things that don't cost any money that I thought, you know, you're not necessarily saving money, but you're not wasting it either. And just supporting some of the places around Grand Rapids that, you know, are kind of going green. I don't know if you guys have been to Marie Katrine's, if you guys have eaten there before. Um, it's in East Town. Um, the Greenwell, the Electric Cheetah, those are some really good restaurants over in like the East Town area that are all um, LEED certified, so they're kind of just like um, they use a lot of really good produce, and they try and like uh, just decrease their carbon footprint. So I like those places. Keystone Church is actually LEED certified. My brother works there, so he actually just told me that. Mm -hmm. um, when you buy things, you know, if you're gonna get apples, then you know you can pick the apple in like the foam container with the plastic around it, or you could just go and like pick four apples out of the you know out of the little bushel over there. Like, I just you know doing that just kind of wastes less packaging. I made this little produce carrier with an old T-shirt that I have. So again, I sewed it up, but you could stitch wishery it up. I cut some holes in it. So instead of taking out like five plastic bags to keep my pepper separate from my asparagus, which I don't know why they need to be separate, I can just put them all in like the same bag, right? It's just, again, you can recycle the bag, but you don't ever need a bag instead of wasting it, so. But yeah, this is just out of an old t-shirt. And if you're, I mean, if you just go online and Google like, what can I do with old t-shirts? There's so many cool things you can make, and they're really easy, like tutorials and things like that. Um, a lot of my things that I make, I get off Pinterest. I don't know if it is a, like it's kind of crazy, <laughs> and it's not just girls. A lot of guys are on Pinterest too. But once you go on, you'll kind of be addicted because there's so many cool ideas on there. Like just way too, you'll have a million things and you'll have done like two. So I, <laughs> I try and do more and more, but it's hard. Um, this website I just put up there because I thought it was called Live Green, Save Green. Uh, they have a lot of cool tips, and you can join as like a member, and then you can discuss people. In fact, right before I left today, someone had just posted how to get rid of their ants in their house, and I was like, grits. Um, so it's just a cool like discussion board where people can talk about doing different things. Um, I'm trying to think, even uh, for my birthday party, my son's birthday party, my mom was like, go buy your plastic plates or paper plates or whatever. And I was like, no mom, I have plates for people. And she makes fun of me because when guests come over for like parties, we use like these little plastic serving trays. But like why, I can wash them off, it's not the end of the world. And so now like we're never gonna buy paper plates. I, I mean, that's kind of nice, like I'm just, how, think of all the ways that I'm not going to be getting into a landfill or something like that. So I no longer buy paper plates and my, like my mother-in-law thinks I'm weird, we went to our cabin and I'm like, nope, we're just going to use these, but I think that's a lot better that way. So um, I buy, you can buy like essential oils at the Harvest Health Food stores, you can make, I have like some old blade plugins that I used to use, you can actually remove, it's kind of tricky, but you can remove that little like wick in it and you can put your own essential oil in and then put it back in and just put it in your wall and it works just like a Glade plug-in, you save yourself money. Um, and Glade plug-ins, if you were to kind of like look at it at all, they actually have a lot of chemicals that they don't list on there, uh, on the box and they're actually pretty bad to have in your house. So this is at least a, a healthier way for you and your family to have like a, something being emitted in your house. That's just like pure essential oil. Um, same thing with like the peppermint extract. So. I don't know, those are, like, I don't know, I just tried to, like, sweep some things out of my house today and bring them with me, and hopefully that would, that would be good. Um, I use this, like, you can buy those little, um, paper bag, like, dispensers for your house, or you can use, like, these little diaper tubs, so I try and just, like, find little things for my house to 